Okay, hi there YouTube. This is uh, an update on my uh, Dodge 4-wheel drive 2500 V10 Magnum to Cummins engine swap. Uh, this has the automatic transmission which is the 4R7E and it doesn't shift into second gear. Now luckily, thanks to all of our many YouTube users, if I drop this pan and it's clean as I suspect it is, because this transmission will shift through all the gears just fine. If you left your, left your foot off of the throttle, release the throttle pressure, and go one, two, three, four, overdrive, lock up, and so on and so forth. So I bought a uh, transducer and heavy duty governor solenoid kit online. So I'm about to drop the pan. I'm going to take off these bolts. And I'm going to let this uh, drain into this nice clean pan I have here on my oil drain thing. Catch. So I'll get back after I drop the pan. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, here's a quick update on the pan. As you can see, so there's nothing in here other than some dust on the magnet. Let me set that down for now. Now I'm going to show you underneath here what goes bad. This little gold solenoid on transducer. I think it's called a transducer on this uh, 99 Dodge. And this uh, governor solenoid, shift solenoid, goes bad. And apparently if you're not shifting one to two or two to three, but it will shift when you release pressure, that's your problem. I guess it's very common. And the truck's only got 150,000 miles. It's in excellent shape. And it's the same transmission that's in a diesel. So if you're going to do a conversion, you want a V10 vehicle because it's got a Dana 70 in the back, 60 in the front, and it's got the heavy-duty tranny in it. And here are the parts you'll need. I got these from the electricaladvantage.net on eBay. This is the new gold colored transducer, $66. This is the new heavy duty Borg Warner. It's about twice the size as the factory one, and it's guaranteed not to leak, which makes the original factory ones fail, which are about half this size. And that is a uh, Borg Warner. Part number 22958HDSL, and on the barcode it says 51185. And this is a transducer for 2000 and up, which I ordered those two by mistake, but the solenoid will work. And this transducer and this solenoid on eBay, I think from the same place, was $86, and this was $66. So anyway, hopefully I can edit this together. i got a problem with my computer for some reason. So I'll be back showing the install later. Okay, now I've managed to pull the lower part of the body here without breaking this gasket. You have to do that because this transducer has this little clip in it. It just pops right out like that. And your transducer comes out. That's the old one. That's the new one. You just merely take the new one. Put more oil on it. Pop it in. And that's it. Of course, I'll clean this up before I put it back in. Now. This is the new governor solenoid. Now I'm going to move the tripod. The solenoid will come out of the transmission. I'm going to move the camera. Bear with me here. This will come out. And I'm on the tripod. Bear with me, please. There's the old one. It pops right out. Well, here's the new one. You can 
see it's quite a bit different. And these are notorious for failing. So anyway, now I'm going to clean it up and reinstall it, and check my bands and stuff like that, and then go down and get some more fluid, put this back together and take it for a test drive. As you can see, that's a big difference in the governor's solenoid. Quite a bit different. Okay. I'll be back as I get the Okay, I had a little uh, interesting event happen to me. Ended up having to drop the valve body. I don't know if you can see where that light's shining. Is that screw holding on the band? Well, lo and behold, I found this in the base pan. That's the anchor for the band. That's why it's not applying. And obviously it's so loose it just fell out. So now that I've dropped the valve body, I can get this back in with a screwdriver and a pair of pliers, readjust it, reattach the valve body, and hopefully I should be back in business. But this little guy was in the pan, stuck in the magnet. I didn't notice it because uh, my eyes aren't so good. Anyway, I can hold this. Of course, now I don't have a screwdriver handy. Well, I do have one here. Nasty one of that. Anyway, where this goes, I think you can see that screw. It's just almost impossible to do this with uh, only two hands. Trying to point out where this goes and aim the flashlight in at the same time. As you can see my screwdriver, there's no room here. See this band? How loose it is? Where that screw is. The camera's getting it. There's the screw right there. This little socket end right here goes on that screw, and this holds the band, and that's why the band is not applying. It fell out and fell right in the pan. So I'm going to put that back in, and I'll uh, update. Okay, believe it or not, it's awful hard to film around a bunch of transmission parts. I don't know if you can see that. My eyes aren't showing it. That's the piece that had fallen out. It's back now in against the band. It bends much tighter. I was able to do that by taking out this piece of metal that holds the other side of the band. And I thought it was kind of odd when I touched the first first band adjustment lever here from the servo. I'm going to get over an inch of travel. See that? Well, it actually came down and hit the top of this gold thing. So it wasn't working at all. It's uh, kind of important to have that working. So now I'm going to adjust the. Uh, I'm sorry about this. It's very difficult to do. I want to adjust that. Uh, I can't get a light on it for you. That screw that's in that anchor. I want to tighten it up a bit. Get that down to about a half inch, I think. And, uh, the transmission should work wonderfully again. That's what was wrong with it. The little piece fell out. Isn't that amazing how that happens? Anyway, my valve body is uh, indeed hanging. I have to uh, put the servo back in. It goes up in that hole right here. And reassembly time is here. Automatic transmissions can be very confusing if you just look at a million pieces all at one time. If you take the time to look at them a piece at a time, like you would look at a business, you know, there's the sales department and there's the comptroller and this, that, and the other. You have to break it all down into little manageable sizes. And if you do that, all of a sudden these don't seem as complex as everyone thinks they are. I've worked on a lot of Chevys, but it's my first Dodge. Alright, I want to put it back together.
And uh, we'll see what happens. This is getting long, but that was the problem with this transmission. There's a 47 RE behind a uh, V10 2500 Dodge, which is soon to be the Cummins swap candidate. All right. Okay, this is the uh, final bit of the video. I'm just showing you now that it drives. I have uh, tested it already. And hopefully we can hear it shift. Some first speed now. Second. Third. Transmission took ten and a half quarts of oil to fill it after I uh, took everything apart, adjusted the bands, uh, put that little piece that fell off obviously back to the band, which is why it didn't shift. And I've also got the new uh, transducer and the um, governor solenoid. Okay, so that's it. It's uh, 99 47RE 2500 Dodge V10 transmissions, all better now.